because Swinton are in yeah they're in a world of trouble unfortunately <laughs> yeah. Roselli scored though for him the Saints fans listening out will be pleased with that um, a game I listened to a little bit of last night it was Dewsbury 20 York 30 York getting a valuable valuable win um, it looked like Dewsbury were going to win it early on but um, York came back and... I think this is the kind of headline though isn't it that you know Batley Dewsbury far more competitive uh, than we were expecting Sheffield to I think into that conversation yeah I mean for me the unexpected team so far has been Batley um, I, I, I saw their game against Witness and they blew them off the park in the second half. Witness have been up and down, but well, Batley were amazing um, in the second half of their game last week. And yeah, going away to Newcastle, good win. So they're probably the, my surprise. Um, you wouldn't expect them to be third, but uh, no, but yeah, the class of the division were both not playing this weekend. Toulouse versus no. Feverson postponed. Yes, it was. So the standings, uh, Featherston and Toulouse stay first and second with a 100% record, uh, given that their match was postponed. Um, Batley and Bradford have three wins from four, 75%. Sheffield are on 62.5%, uh, with York, Dewsbury and Oldham at 50%. Newcastle, um, Widnes and London have 37.5% records. Halifax and Whitehaven are at 25%, and Swinton are last without a win as yet. Yeah, the Women's Super League, it was round two. Uh, Featherston nil, uh, Leeds 72 was the the Twitch game. Um, I think I went to put it on about 20 minutes in and saw it was already 20-something nil and thought I'll, uh, I'll go back to gardening. Um, Wigan 38, Bradford nil. I did watch the highlights of this one this morning and a lot of close-range tries from Wigan in this game. So that suggests big improvement from Bradford compared to the game against Saints last time out. Um, St. Helens 90, Huddersfield nil. So the young girls at Huddersfield have uh, had a, a rude, rough start to things, unfortunately, for them. And Wakefield nil, Castleford 44 in that local derby. And there was a controversial tweet. So another thing to talk about uh, that came from the League Weekly Twitter account. Now, people need to be aware that that League Weekly is no longer a rugby league publication. It doesn't exist anymore. They haven't resumed after the after the pandemic, have they? No. So it's it's not in print. Um, but White Pie got in touch and said, "Mark, I hope you are planning on calling out League Weekly for this bullshit, especially this weekend when there is a concerted effort to combat online trolling." And the tweet from, let's face it, it'll be Danny Lockwood, wouldn't it? That's, Probably that's the guy who run it, wasn't it? Was that his name? Well, it's it's somebody who has access to their who has access to their Twitter account. Let's put it that way. Said feel for the girls and young women propping up the virtue signalling pretense at women's super league in inverted commas. Today's scores: ninety nil, seventy two nil, forty four nil, thirty eight nil. Hope all emerge on her and not too disheartened. Um, I think the part that people were picking up was the use of the utterly fucking bollocks phrase virtue signaling pretense um of women's super leagues that's the part that people took took offense to from this isn't it rather than the second half of that tweet i think yeah because th- there are some legitimate questions and and problems as, as as a you know bradford as a team have been you know systematically stripped of the best players that we have because they've gone to to other teams and we all know who those four teams are who are the best teams in this league and the worry is that or the kind of perception is perhaps that you, you'll only get picked for the national team if you're paying, playing in one of these big four teams which is a that there is there is so there is a genuine problem there and lack of competition in the league is also a problem that's a genuine problem I think there's a secondary problem as well in terms of the depth in the competition Um, because what we're seeing is is kids playing in these is some of these sides Um, Huddersfield in particular fielding a lot of young girls and I kind of (sighs) who maybe aren't ready for the level of competition that they face when they come up against a very well drilled St. Helens side. 
Yeah, and and, and well, yeah, ninety nil does tells you that, doesn't it? I think the 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 trouble is that ninety nil does nobody any favours. It doesn't do the Huddersfield players any favours, and it doesn't really do the St Helens players any favours either, because it's not the level of competition you want them to be playing. Now, I know that they've got this um, this split coming up, haven't they, mm-hmm. um, later on in the competition in terms of the groupings. So that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because, you know, Saints will be playing Wigan Moore and Leeds and probably Cass will be the fourth team, you would guess. Um, yeah, but, but get yeah. back in your sort of Britain first kind of bunker with your use of phrases like virtue signaling by calling it the Super League. I don't think I don't think anyone sees the women's Super League as being on a par with the men's Super League. I think it's just a way of clearly helping that competition and brand gain more traction um by aligning it to the very well established now men's competition structure and as we also saw with the teams taking on the names of the Super League sides and training within the facilities of the Super League sides, especially the you know, the top four sides that we talk that we will talk much more about, as long along with though Warrington, Huddersfield, new entrance this year, you know, you've got to have some pain when you expand. There's going to be some problems and we should be supportive of that rather than just outright unnecessarily nasty about it yeah i I completely agree my my point i'm trying to be constructive about it yeah 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 Um, but and there is room for that conversation yeah there is a definite problem with consolidation of talent in teams that is a problem um and i'm not saying we should be you know it shouldn't be we shouldn't be allocating players out to you know and to be honest, you know. we did have it a bit before because Bradford had, you know, Bradford and Featherstone had all the good players. Yeah, no, no, exactly. But the, the, and I'm I'm not saying this because you know the shoes now. Players the were travelling over from this side of the Pennines to play for Featherstone to be in a competitive side. Yeah. When there was no competitive side in the Wigan Borough or what have you. The the ultimate, as you say, the ultimate problem is the is is broadening the talent pool and the kind of the, the readiness to play at that level isn't it um and you're right that unfortunately particularly when you see um the scores of that of that kind of weekend it's just it's it, it so happens that the the more talented teams have faced up against the less talented teams for that weekend consistently and we're gonna so, see this for a while but yeah you know, similarly though, when these teams play against each other, you know, York against Wakefield delivered a cracking cup tie last week. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so so you just hope that as and you say, what that... do you do? Do you not expose them to progression, to expansion of the competition, to getting more brands involved in in the women's game, to to get participation ramped up? I mean. Are more girls playing rugby league in Warrington now because they have a a team that's in the in the formal structure? I think so. Are more girls playing rugby league in Wigan now? I think so. Yeah, more than likely. More than likely, as you say, it's just it's a matter of just since building girls it up in drop the right out. Way. Like Sarah's talked quite a bit about um, Alicia. I think she's called. She was a very good player with the Might and Warriors Junior side. But now they're at the age where the girls don't play with the boys anymore, I guess because yes. puberty's kicking in and that sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, those girls probably would have drifted into something else. But now they see a Super League, you know, that's got aspirations of paying its players. It's certainly getting coverage for the sport. Don't. Don't try and push it down some other hole that you want to with your with with other agendas or what have you might be. This isn't. It's a positive. The growth of women participation is a positive. Yes, there are challenges and questions certainly, but we wouldn't get the York Wakefield Cup game if we didn't have them all in Super League. I don't think as well. Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and there has to be a pathway, as you say. And unfortunately, that does sometimes lead to unbalanced contests. But um, short I, th- I think pay. ultimately it's the right thing. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, fucking hell, we've seen some unbalanced cont- contests in other competitions, you know. Yeah. Didn't Wigan once put 80 on London in a Challenge Cup semi-final not that long ago? Well, it, it's in not a million about it. Yeah, it's not a million years since um, since Wigan were put in about that same on Bradford in Bradford in a league semi final. It, it happens, unfortunately. We've seen it in League One as well. It does happen, but um, it's just a reflection because also well, the other I saw approaches... Blackpool score 128 points against Gateshead. Yeah. So <laughs> it does happen. I mean, obviously the, the other approach is what the NRL does with because um, they've only got four teams, haven't they? What well, they had four last year. Yes. So that, that that's the other way you do it. You only expand to five teams, six teams when you feel you've got the player pool. But I don't know. I, I'd rather concentrate on, as you say, on participation. And, you know, what, what do your 11-year-old kind of prospective uh, female players do when they can't play with the boys anymore? Um, you know, you need to have some kind of route for them if they if they want to continue, don't you? So. And there's a lot more scope for personalities and you know women to look up to now uh, through through aligning the women's competition model with the men's albeit as clearly still an amateur sport and we have to just recognize that and they're yeah. not playing the same sort of intensity either so they might be you know women against girls in in some of these instances but it's not the same intensity as the professional game uh you know when you're in that sort of circumstance it 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 really isn't. There's a lot. The game's a lot slower. There's a lot more space. You know, it's it's a work in progress. A, a really good, strong, promising work in progress that is doing well for our sport in, in so many ways. And to to just knock it at, uh, at opportunities, it, it just feels out of place for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to call it bullshit because <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> Right, NRL. Let's do these without comment, even if we've got comments to make. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Well, I, I've seen nothing this weekend, so that, that's absolutely fine for me. So it was the eighth round of the NRL. It was the Raiders 20, the Rabbitohs 34. For the Raiders, Whitehead had a try, Sutton had 108 metres. Burgess played for the Rabbitohs. Yeah, uh, Whitehead played seven because Williams pulled up in the warm-up. Mark Butler said, an enjoyable one which ultimately went with form despite a superstar from injury hit camera, including some commentary gold after the first try of, where were the greens? Uh, absolutely everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kit Clash, Kit, Clash, Kit Clash won this one. Souths roared back and looked to have won it. A late South Simmon in threatened to make it interesting, but Canberra had tries chalked off twice for ob- obstruction, which ended their challenge. Uh, Carsten says a close game in the first half but the Raiders can only play for 40 minutes so it looks yeah really does uh, David Hunter said I thought the Raiders would be in with a real shot of this one and then George Williams goes down in the warm up they were brave but not in the same class as the Rabbitohs it was Storm 40 Sharks 14 the I saw a little bit of the this next one Broncos 36 Titans 28 in a seesaw match uh, Farnworth had a try in 118 metres and Mark Butler said extraordinary scenes from Brisbane the Titans were irresistible in the first quarter across four times with three from clever kicks and Brisbane looked cooked surprising composure from them though to gradually work their way back and assisted by a Titans card level by the break the pace wasn't so frenetic in the second half but Brisbane stayed dominant to score twice and hold off a late Titans rally breathless stuff it finished Panthers 28 Sea Eagles 18 and then it was Bulldogs 10 Eels 32 Thompson played and made 41 tackles and David Hunter said another week and another English player schooled by the blue and golds Luke Thompson was actually quite good but the Eels middles are just too dominant I did really fear this one would ignite the the rivalry but in reality they only scored from two questionable calls when they got a penalty from a lost ball and they pulled Moses off the ball and no penalty otherwise they did this in a canter it finished the Knights for the Roosters 38 the Warriors 24 Cowboys 20 
and the Dragons are eight, West Tigers 16. So the standings, the 100% Panthers stay out on top with eight from eight. Uh, the Eels and Rabbitohs are just behind on 14, with the Roosters and Storm on 12. Dragons and Warriors have eight points. The Titans lead a group of five on six, which includes the Raiders, Seagulls, Knights and Cowboys. Sharks, West Tigers. 